fourth chapter, and we're going to read the 21st through the 23rd verse, amen, that's Mark 4, 21, when you get there, say amen, amen. hallelujah, amen, I hear a few more pages turning, amen, amen, amen. amen. Mark 4 and 21. We all there? Amen. Amen. We're going to read the 21st through the 23rd verse. And we're going to all read together. Amen. Amen. Let's read. And he said unto them, It's a cannibal to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither will anything kept secret but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. 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 May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Uh, my title is, Let Your Life Shine. Come on. Amen. Let, meaning to allow. Allow your light to shine. Amen. And the background on this is that, you know, Jesus had just finished teaching them a parable about the seed, the soil, and the soil. Amen. In fact, the study shows that this was the first parable that, um, that was used, ever used by Jesus, the parable about the soil. It, was, it gives insight to people's responses to the gospel. And at the end, it encourages and assures us that if we are faithful to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that there would be those who receive it and bear much fruit. Amen. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Amen. So now, here Jesus come in verse 21, he says, and he said unto them, it's a candle brought, brought to be put under a, bush, a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick, for there is nothing here which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but, it's, but that it should come abroad. Amen. Now, Jesus here was talking to his followers. Okay. Okay. See, knowledge brings with it responsibilities. Right. The Bible even says that to whom much is given, much is required. Amen. See, we, we see here that Jesus was saying that the kingdom of God can be hidden or it can be revealed. Amen. See, a lamp is a place to give light, not to hide light. It reminds me of past hurricanes. Amen. And when we had no electricity. Amen. And we had to use candles. Well, I didn't take my candle and put it in the closet. Amen. And I didn't take it and put it on the kitchen sink. But what I did, I took my candle and I put it on the mantel of the fireplace. Somewhere high that would give much light. And then I discovered that if I took that cam I took the candle and put it in front of a mirror, yeah. and the mirror reflected the light and gave even more light. Yeah. See, some of y'all missed that. <laughs> Amen. See, the Bible says that we can be the mirrors that brightly reflects the glory of God. See, it's very important that we understand what Jesus is saying here because Jesus is the light. Amen. He's the light of the world. Amen. And his word is the light of the kingdom. The Bible says his word is a, is a lamp unto our path. So I think I can safely say that the lamp here or the candle here is the word of God. Just like the seed in the parable of the sower. Amen. Now, in other words, God has not revealed these truths about himself or about his word for us. For us to hide from the world. Because if we hide it, it would be hidden from those who are lost. And it's God's will that everyone be saved. Amen. So Jesus is saying here, for him to hide his truth from us would be like putting a little candle under a bushel. Just like natural light illuminates darkness and enables us to see visibly. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. We are light beamers for Christ. Amen. So that others may see the truth of the gospel and be freed from the blindness of sin and deception. 
And that's deception was an interesting word. It caught my attention because uh, a couple of, some months ago, the Lord told me to, to start buying the spirit of deception. Okay. And I had to repent because I did it only for a little while. I, I should have went into warfare about it. Amen. And I did not gave it a light prayer, you know, a couple of times I mentioned, you know, buying it, you know, but I didn't go into warfare of it. And I repented from it. Amen. Because deception is a strong spirit. Deception is a trick or scheme used to get what you want. I say deception. It's a trick or scheme to use to get what you want. Deception involves acting in such a way which leads another person to believe something that you yourself do not believe to be true. People often claim that they are not misleading others, even though they are intentionally withholding important information from them because they make it easier to, be, to deceive. You know, you tell some of the truth, but you didn't tell the whole story, or you didn't tell the, all the truth, amen, but you told this enough for them to believe what you want them to believe. All right, hold on, because it's going to get a little tight. I was looking at the DNC, and this particular woman got up, and she gave a speech. And I was listening to the speech. And it was an excellent speech. Right. And I was saying, that's an excellent speech. If I didn't know the truth. Right. And when I said that, the Lord said to me, he said, well, they used to be lawyers. And a lawyer's job is to make you believe what they're saying. <laughs> All right, and the lawyer's job <laughs> is to make you believe what they're saying. Even if their, their client is wrong, is guilty, amen. But if they can find, make you have a doubt, there's a reason but doubt, one reason but doubt, amen. They know they can convince you. They can win. Right. Amen. And we have to be careful. Because we are people of God. See, we as Christians, when I say Christians, I mean Christ-like. Amen. Christians, Christ-like. Amen. We must hold up a light. Amen. We know homosexuality is an abomination of God. And you pass a law that gave a right for homosexuality to have free course in America. That didn't help America. Same sex is not a marriage. Because God created marriage. And only he has the right to define what marriage is. That didn't help America. You know abortion is wrong. That didn't help America. Our 13-year-old daughters now can go and get birth control without their parents' knowledge or approval. That didn't help America. We have 13 years old children that are now mothers because you take away a parent's right. That didn't help America. We got children raising children in America. That didn't help America. You know, you never weaken the military of a country. That's what keep a country strong. That didn't help America. See, with Christians, when I say Christian, I'm talking about Christ light. See, we got to let the light shine. Christ light. It shouldn't be black and white. It should be what's wrong and right. Amen. 
It shouldn't be what's black and white. It should be what's wrong and right. We are Christ-like people. We have a light to hold up. We can't allow ourselves to get caught in this all that's going on. I was doing a study on this, and I ran across something that he was really good. He just, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to read this to you. It says, darkness, darkness impairs vision. In a spiritual sense, the kind of darkness that the Bible speaks of impairs a person morally. He cannot see. He does not understand the effect of sin or even the root of it in the depravity of the human heart. His entire way of thinking is warped by the darkness. His understanding has been switched off when it comes to grasping more issues related to his own life. So he joins organizations that go, great, go to great lengths to protect some snail or endangered fish or certain species of animals, but then support the abortion of an unborn child. In his mind, a snail or a mouse or a whale has much more value as a human being that has been made in the image of God. His thinking is warped in darkness. Believers, we are to shine the light of God's kingdom to the world in which we live. We benefit our world only when we live like as life. It's only as we live life as light. If the person of the world fornicates and we fornicate, what's the difference? If they lie and we lie, what's the difference? When they have poor work ethics and we have poor work ethics, what's the difference? When they complain and murmur against life circumstances, and we complain and murmur against life circumstances, what's the difference? When they don't love their spouses and we don't love our spouses, what's the difference? When they divorce and we divorce, what's the difference? When they are lazy and we are lazy, what's the difference? We cannot benefit, we cannot benefit the world when we are like the world. Christians are to reflect the light of Jesus to the world. And what is the light, this light? It is the light of salvation, the light of eternal life, the light of the knowledge of God, the light of the joy of salvation, the light of hope, and the light that shines in darkness. It is the light that opens the eyes of the blind and causes them to see the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are the light of the world. That's what Jesus was telling his followers. He said, I have, all that I have given you, it's not for you to hide. It's not for you to put under the bushel. But it's for you to put on a candlestick so that it can draw men unto God. We have to stand in who God has created us to be. Now, this is not a hate speech. Amen. Only to sin. See, we as Christians got to go and got to go get our candles back out and light it, and set it on the hill, so that we may draw all men to God. Amen. See, we have the answers of life. The answers of life is in us. The world looking for someone they can come to to find an answer for. Amen. But we have to let our light shine so they will know that, you, that you, they can come to you. You know, uh, oh, some years ago when I was doing time, I was working, and um, this is one of the uh, guys that worked with me, he said, he said, well, Ms. Collins, he said, so what you, feel, what you think about uh, ministers wearing collars? Because some of them don't wear them. He said, I think they should. He said, because if I go to a hospital and I need prayer and I see, when I see a man walking with the collar on, I know I can go to them. Amen. I said, you know, that's, that's good. That, that's good. And I thought about that. And the Lord told me where my thing today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But because you should, baby, I should have an answer for you. Amen. And when you see this collar, you look for somebody to give you an answer. Amen. When you turn on your light, if you're in a dark place, you know, I think, I think about when people be, um, they said they'd be dying, amen, and they saw a light, it was way down there, and they began to rush toward the light. Because they know there's light, there is life. Amen. There's got to be some kind of power that pushing that light. Amen. So we got to be the light. In a dark, uh, it's a dark world out there. Amen. And we needed some lights to be shining. Amen. You know, one time years ago, I was right, we had a church up in uh, Robinson in Fairhope. What is it? 
in Foley. I was riding one night down the, the highway, down 59, and as I was looking, I began to see, you know, before they built up so much. There was a lot of bushes, trees way far off. But behind that, every now and then, I saw a trickle of light. And I said, oh, life is back there. And then God began to have me to notice the street lights. So when we got to the street light, some street light was flickering. Some would go off and come on. They go off and they come on. Then some lights were just off altogether. And then it got to one that was just shining bright. You know, that's, and sometimes that's how we are. Sometimes we flicker. Light just flicker. It's off and on, off and on, off and on. Then sometimes we just put it down. Then we pick it back up. We put it down. We pick it back up. Amen. And some of them just, just turn off and get about the whole thing. I'll be back later. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But then some of us as they stand with your light on. Amen. And that's what God wants us. He wants us in a place. Wouldn't it be nice when you go to a street at dark at night and you see a street light on so that you can turn? Don't you feel better? You feel safer. Amen. It's something about the light that make that draws you to it. Amen. See, we cannot hide. A lot of stuff is happening now in the world because we didn't put our candles on the stand. Now, I'm not saying that we're the cause of all of it. Amen. But I believe that if we had stood stronger, amen, some things would have been different. My heart gets saddened when I see some of the saints' comments on Facebook. It should not be so. And they boldly proclaim their opinion. Yes, you can have an opinion, but it should be the right opinion. But if your opinion do not line up with the word of God, you need to change your opinion. You know, it, we got to get away from black and white. It's what's wrong and what's right. That's all God is concerned about. Amen. Don't allow this election to cause you to negate what Jesus has done for us. You know what's wrong. You know it. I mean, it's no doubt about it. It's nothing in your mind that, that you know that what was done in this past election, I'm sorry, I just had to say it. He might have cut it. I don't know. I mean, it, it was wrong. It was wrong. And when I see the saints of God that rejoice in it, you know, that's a, and this, somebody, <laughs> you, got, you may have just not put them out there. Uh, um, Somebody had the nerve to say, text me and somebody, uh, they won't, we're going to talk about, this like we stood behind this person, we're going to stand behind that person. I said, the devil is a lie. I'm the, <laughs> the devil is a lie. I know the truth. I cannot allow, I can't put my truth down to go with a color or, 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 or agenda. I can't do it. I know what's right and I know what's wrong and I know God is looking for me to hold up a candle. And if you have to hold it up by yourself, you stand up by yourself. You hold, but you hold the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ up high. Amen. Don't get caught up. Whew. You know, we are to love. That's the gospel. Jesus said, that's how you know my disciples. For the love that they have one for another. We got to love. We can't put. We can't put our candle down for anything, anybody. I don't care who it is. Amen. Turn your Bibles to James 4 and 17. I do have a couple of scriptures. <laughs> I'm just passionate about this. All right. <laughs> Say everything instant now. <laughs> Amen. James 4 and 17. We there. It says, therefore, to him that know it to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. Now that word sin in the Greek means missing the mark. The message Bible say, if you know the right thing to do, and don't do it, that for you is evil. See, we got to hold up the light. We can't allow people's opinion, opinions to change us from who we are. 
Jesus done too much. Jesus died for me. I cannot stand with something that Jesus died for me for, and it goes against what he died for me for. And I can get up and say, I love you, Lord. I can't do it. And we got to take a stand. We have to let our light shine. Amen. Go to 2 Timothy 4 and 1. This is what he gave me today, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Do you feel the love? Because <laughs> I love y'all. Love you, love you, love you. I'm on my mission, though. <laughs> okay, thank you. 2 Timothy 4 and 1. It says, I charge you therefore before God. That the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing of his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers and they have heat to themselves teachers they go around teaching people having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions not I mean do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry now the living Bible says it's like this. And so I solemnly urge you before God and before Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set up his kingdom, to preach the word of God urgently, urgently at all times, whenever you get the chance, in season and out, when it is convenient and when it is not. Correct and rebuke your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right and all the time being feeding and all the time be feeding them patiently with God's word. For there is going to come a time when people don't listen to the truth. But we'll go around looking for teachers who will tell them just what they want to hear. They won't listen to what the Bible says, but will blankly follow their own misguided ideas. Stand steadily. And don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Bring others to Christ. Leave nothing undone that you ought to do. We got to hold up the light. Amen. We have to let the gospel of the light shine through us. We have to, you know, if you love God, for real, you got to let it show. And there's going to be some time you may have to stand alone. You're never alone. Jesus is always with you. You have a whole host of angels with you. Amen. But we have to be able to stand. Turn to Mark 4 and 23. Back to Mark 4. Let your light shine. Mark 4 and 23. It says, If any man have ears, to hear, let him hear. It says, if any man has ears, let him hear. Say, if is the condition. If you have ears that hear. See, everybody has ears. So apparently there are some ears that can hear, and there are some ears that cannot hear. He said, if you have ears, that can hear. Amen. Let them hear. Amen. Here, Jesus is talking about the inner, the inner hearing of the heart. We talked about how if is the condition. Amen. If any man have ears, let him hear. Jesus is stressing the need of men to listen and consider carefully. Because in verse 24... It tells us, it says unto them, and take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. 
and unto you do, that hear shall more be given. So it's important that we hear correctly. Amen. Because, because whatever is given to you and that you receive, amen, more are going to be given. And you know, it's true. you can be studying your Bible. Amen. And you can start studying. And when you start studying and you get a revelation, more and more and more started coming. And then it'll keep coming until you just stop it. Amen. Amen. Because what he wants... He wants to empower us with all of this information about him. Amen. So don't get the seed. The children of Israel got the seed. And thinking that they needed a king. God told Moses that they didn't reject you, Moses, but they rejected me. Amen. They thought it would be better if they had a king. They began to look back, remembering Egypt. Well, they was in bondage. Well, they were slaves. Amen. But they wanted to, a king like they had in Egypt. They wanted some other person other than God to control them. Someone they could see. Let's make sure that we're not replacing God. Let's make sure that we're not replacing God. Design another king, another savior. Because I've heard a lot of comments on, and they look at people as their savior. I'm talking about the saints of God. I ain't talking about the world. I know what the world going to do, but the saints. You shouldn't be looking at nobody as your savior but Jesus Christ. He's the only one that died for you. Amen. And rose again that we can have victory. Made us more than the conqueror. Because he was the conqueror. Amen. And now we are more than what he did for us. St. John 1. Ooh, I'm almost through, y'all. St. John, first chapter, first verse. Y'all get anything out of this? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see the light? All right, all right, all right. Amen. St. John, first chapter, first verse. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, drop down to verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Well, we can understand the world not knowing who he is. Amen. Because they don't have eyes to see, ears to hear. Amen. It said, he came unto his own. What? And his own received him not. Isn't it amazing? They didn't say his own didn't know him. They say his own didn't receive him. Isn't that amazing? Because all through history, they were looking for the Messiah, the Savior. They taught, their, they taught he, of his coming. They taught their children about the Messiah that was coming, the Savior that was going to come and save the world. He came and walked among them. He did many miracles. He healed the sick. He opened blind eyes. He raised the dead. He fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. Plus, he cast out devils. He taught the word with profound wisdom to his own. The one he had picked. And they received him not. They knew who to look for. They knew he had all the signs, everything that they were taught. But when he came to his own, the, his own received him not. We have to make sure that when the truth comes, that we don't receive it not. You know, receive, meaning that they didn't let him in. They didn't let him govern their lives. They wouldn't let him enter their hearts. 
his own, the one he handpicked, they received him not. Listen, we know what's right and what's wrong. So when the truth come, let him in. Let your light shine. Amen. I have a little prayer. Amen. God gave me. I wrote it down. Amen. Let's just bow your head. My Sharokosha. Glory to you, Lord God. Glory, 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 glory to you, Lord God. Father God, we come to you thanking you for this word. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for not allowing, allowing our candle to sit high and to draw all men unto you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as our helper and our teacher. Help us to be that light to the world that God is calling us to be in the earth. Teach us how to walk in that light among men. Strengthen us, that, strengthen us not to take down when it comes to making the right decision. Father, stir up the giftings within us so that we may discern and recognize deception and not be fooled or give in to it. Help us not to mislead or be misleading. Father God, I close us with the whole arm of God so we'll be able to stand as our lives bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, his listeners of his word. Amen and do us. Praise the Lord.